as we are still in the mood of celebrating women as the International Women's Day and also the month of celebrating mothers, it is only right that we look at the section of women that are neglected not just in sub-Saharan Africa with Nigeria included but around the world and these are widows. With Nigeria home to about 15 million of the world's 258 million widows, it's only right we talk about them and how badly they are being treated in an ethnical and religious diverse country like Nigeria. But why is widowhood sometimes considered a sudden death? And how can we ensure that they are properly cared for, uphold their rights, and seek for more inclusion? And how can we also ensure that gender equality is seen in the African most populous black nation and also the call for women to contribute their own quota to the development of a more advanced Nigeria? And that's what we're looking at today as we extray, still in the month of celebrating women, still in the month of celebrating mothers, and most certainly still in the month of looking at those issues that seem to plague a larger proportion of women that are called mothers, but also widows, and are truly neglected. And that's what we're looking at today as we look at gender equality and protecting women's rights is a major discourse today on The Big Story. And to truly help us uh, talk about this is no other but the founder of the IFO or IFO Initiative and chairperson of uh, the Doe Foundation. And I'm talking of Barrister Faith Oyeunye Wuma Mrs. And she'll be helping us throughout the discussion. Uh, good morning and welcome to the show, madam. Good morning, Mr. Michael. It's good to be here again. Well, it's indeed a good one. And what better time for us to talk about protecting women and also advancing or looking at widowhood rather than in the month we are still in uh, that we've come to celebrate women and mothers. And uh, that is uh, the International Women's Day. And the month of March is always considered uh, the month many few women should be marching forward. Yeah. Uh, but let's quickly look at it. When we talk about women's rights, uh, are they a bit different from other rights enjoyed by citizens? And, and the reason I rather want to start with this first question, uh, m many persons are now beginning to feel, okay, there's this call for protection of women's rights. Mm -hmm. When we have our normal civic rights, mm -hmm. and which is entrenched in the 1999 constitution, as amended. So are they quite different rights or the same rights but being spelled out differently or enforced differently with more to it? I really want to understand. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um we, those rights that are enjoyed by citizens are mm -hmm. also rights that are to be enjoyed by women. Okay. But um, there are actually specific rights which have been um, made out for women, especially to protect them. These rights are enshrined in the 1994 Constitution. We we'll okay. have them in Chapter 4 of the 1999 Constitution and also Chapter 17. Mm -hmm. But there are other specific laws which have been legislated over the years and okay. that is because of what women or widows are faced. Yeah. We have the Widows Protection Bill. Okay. We have um, Universal... In Nigeria? Yes. Okay. Though yet to be domesticated in most states. <laughs> and then um, we have the Child Rights Act and its allied matters. We also have... Um, um, international charter because, uh, because th that's my question I really wanted to yes. know the different rights yes. we have protecting women yes. different from the normal yes. rights yes. Uh, that yes. seems to protect actually, all of us there are a lot of these rights which are actually spared specifically for women okay these civic rights like you mentioned are rights to be enjoyed by every Everybody. citizen in Nigeria but over the years because of what women have been facing especially with those rights most uh, laws are made to protect these women like the laws i just mentioned yes. if you go to chapter 17 of the nightmare constitution mm. it mentions specific rights that these women are supposed to enjoy free from violence they have a right to be free from violence they have a right to live mm. um, a life um, not um, filled with that violence yeah. Yeah. they have a right to own property whether solely or jointly they have a right to their husband's property if the man dies. In fact, there are a lot of them. But, but if, you feel, if you feel these rights are there, my next question is, you said they've not been domesticated. Some of the laws, like this uh, Widow's uh, Protection Bill, is yet to be domesticated in some of the states. 
but like um, I can refer is, to is there is there any reason for that is, uh, does it contradict the normal customary tradition law that many states enjoy actually most of the uh, sections are mm -hmm. uh, to protect women from barbaric and uh, cultural norms which are dated yes which are dated you know but it's funny that some states are yet to domesticate such laws i don't know their reasons but um we have states who have um, appreciated such laws and they've domesticated it but uh, notwithstanding even better states do yet to domesticate that law we have some other laws which has been domesticated in the states we have the vap law which is also um, meant to protect women too especially from violence because when we talk about gender issues women tend to suffer more from uh, some of these uh, yeah domestic violence val yes. just like yesterday a man killed his wife in a state in nigeria after domestic violence but anyway we will not go to that sad narrative okay. but but my next question is why do you advocacy for women's rights yeah because yeah if we feel that basically the rights everybody has a right yeah. citizens are have that right to yeah. either like you said leave work yeah. own property yes. and exist coexist with others, others yes. so so wh why the advocacy for women's rights Let, okay. let's understand you know, why it's sounding to be on the page. same book but on a different page, page yes um women over the years being vulnerable and um, okay. when okay. there are crises in some situations in some country women tend to suffer more because of their vulnerability okay. and so they um some women at the time saw the need to come up with some of these um, bills or laws to see how women can be protected okay. you know because of our cultural beliefs women seem not to have the right to own property even when the man dies very well they know that this woman spent her life with the man but, yes but the moment the man dies nobody is thinking of her welfare or her children's welfare mm. they just say she's uh, the man is dead and um, of course there will be accusations and all that and so at that time she's either thrown out of the house yeah. but there are laws which protect her there's need does, for this does those laws exist of course they do they do um, the next uh, chapter four, uh, four of the next net constitution mm. specifically mentioned rights to be enjoyed by every citizen irrespective of your gender so if um, a widow loves the husband and you're saying she doesn't have a right to any of the man's property for any reason of course that's barbaric she has a right to inherit her husband's property which is actually enshrined in the widow's uh, protection bill and some other laws she has a right to a certain proportion of the man's property even if she does not have a, a, a hair for the man mm. you know there's this understanding that because she does not have a child for the man she's just thrown out like that no she has a right to inherit a portion a certain portion of the man's property even when she does not have a child for the man and more or less when she uh, she has children, children for the man so um even when the other widows mm. the law specifies how those property can be shared for these women you understand but um you see because uh, of our cultural traditions beliefs and norms you find out that we have we live in a male domineering society so they want to use their fiscal power and everything to make sure that this lady is left out of the man's uh, inheritance which is not proper so there's a need to do more advocacy to make women out there understand that there are laws protecting them there are laws that give them the right to own such properties. Mm. And if, for instance, they face those situations, mm. they can go to the law to get um, redress. redress, you know. Mm. And so women who are not aware, we need to create this advocacy. And you find that the over times, a lot of women are coming to understand that these are their rights. And so they have to take hold of them and okay. enjoy their rights. Now, Barista, when you're a woman, I, I really would want to ask. I, I don't want to sound like if I'm a male dominated. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. yeah, but, but I, I really want to understand now because this is where the question lies. Okay. Are you saying that the traditional law and custom, which sometimes our court also recognize, does not supersede these other laws? Uh, is that what you're saying? No, um, uh, I, let me address it from this way. Please, let's, let's Okay, understand. let me give you a scenario. Mm. A man dies without writing a will. Okay. Ordinarily, if he writes a will, they will supersede every other yeah, yeah, paper yeah. or anything that may come it's in. It's law. Yes, that may come in, please. But a situation where the man dies interested with, without writing a will, the man's cultural beliefs comes into play. Okay. And then, yes, most of our beliefs, most of our culture um, actually appreciates the fact that the woman is entitled to a certain portion of the man's 
property. Okay. You understand? It is fair. They know that it is fair. But the way to be shared will be another issue. Now, uh, it's a cultural belief that when a man, a woman dies, a man dies, the woman who still decides to be the man's uh, wife is allowed to stay in that matrimonial home. She should not be thrown out of the home for any reason, whether the man has kids or not. For the fact that she is a legal wife, she has been married to the man to death, she has the right to live in the man's matrimonial uh, home. And if she decides to remarry, it's also a decision to give it out or not. No, yes. That is provided for in the uh, widow's protection bill, which most women don't know. We will come to think of it. This is a man, both of you, putting your resources, putting time, energy to make sure you get some of these properties. And because he's dead, the extended family comes and they're, they're just interested in grabbing everything from themselves. That's not right. We have to think of the way of this woman, the way of our children after the man's death. So that is the reason why some of these laws have been um, legislated to protect the women. So like I said, a man dies without writing a will. We fall back to his cultural beliefs. And the beliefs, obviously, is to say this woman, woman can be taken care of. But if I because of some of these selfish and wicked uh, extended family, mm -hmm. they are not interested in protecting or caring for the woman. They are only interested in grabbing. in grabbing whatever is left of the man's property. Then in a situation where the family or the extended family, they don't want to go by that, she has the right to take them up to court, to the law courts. Where issues, where the woman is entitled to a certain portion of the man's property, estate, properties, or whatever the man may have left behind. Okay, well, thank you so much, and I, but I'll plead with you to hold on. Okay. Uh, we need to go on the break now, but when we come back, we'll continue our discussion. As we look at this, uh, like I said, uh, Nigeria is home to about 15 million and counting of the 236 million widows in the world. And uh, you are totally agree with me, just maybe because of our uh, ethnic and religious belief, uh, these uh, widows or widowhood seems to be like sudden death. And uh, it's a sad narrative, but one that's truly existing uh, in the country. And how can we change that narrative and make our women not just seem to have that right, but also be catered for one after the death of their loved one? Let's go on a break.